In this video, Dr. Jordan Peterson explains how we interact with the world in a way that benefits us and what happens when unexpected things happen. It's also customary for us to look at the world in terms of its utility. And I would say with human beings, it's, it's, it's a very tool-based utility. Because, you know, our brain is part of our body. Our brain is adapted to our body, and our body is adapted to our brain. Obviously, they co-evolved, and so the kind of brain we have is the sort of brain that a creature that stands upright and can manipulate the world has. And we'll see some evidence of that later. But because we're so handy, we can speak with our hands, and we can manipulate things with our hands, and we can transform things with our hands, and we can tear things apart, and we can hunt, and there's like, there's it, and we can plant, and there's it. There's an endless number of possibilities for hand utilization. The world appears to us arrayed out as tools, roughly speaking, and a tool would be something... It's, it, it, it's hard to get the word exactly right because I like tool because tool implies something that you can use. So naturally when you lay out the world, it, it lays itself out into things that are going to be useful for you things that you're going to get in your way, and then things that have neither property. And under most circumstances, the things that have neither proper property are the overwhelming majority. And that's partly how you manage to process the world in all of its complexity with, with your relatively narrow processing capacity. Most things have no significance, and they have no significance within this very, very focal frame, which is, you know, if you remember the hierarchy diagram, it's like in that hierarchy diagram, most of the time you're operating at the level of motor interaction with the world. You're actually engaged with the world either through articulation, but forget about that for now, or you're actually in, engaged moving in the world and moving it around and interacting with it. And so it's, it's as if you're viewing the world through a series of concentric lenses, and the, all of those concentric lenses exclude, and then the very, the highest resolution lens, the one that enables you to focus closest, is the one that helps you highlight those few things in the vast perceptual world of nothingness that seem to be critical for that particular operation. So, now you can see that, I mean, the most dramatic example of that, I was really personally thrilled about Dan Simon's gorilla experiments because I'd been thinking about this for a long time before that experiment came out, and it was the clearest demonstration I'd ever seen. I mean, there's a lot of demonstrations like that now, but it was the clearest demonstration I'd ever seen that, indeed, most of, most of what your perceptual systems do is exclude. So... Now what that means, this is the tricky thing, is that what that means is that wrapped up in what you exclude is the entire, is all of being, virtually. And that's a very tricky problem because when, when you're excluding all of being, in some sense you're setting its value to zero. You say, well, except for those few things that I'm concentrating on now, everything else is zero and it's zero and unchanging. And the problem with that is that lots of times that's not right. Now, it's, it's right enough, luckily enough, and I, I suppose this is a consequence of evolution too. We're fast enough or slow enough, depending <coughs> on how you look at it, so that we can assume constancy across some spans of time under some conditions. Now, from a philosophical perspective, that's inadequate. Some of you might have heard of the phrase, the scandal of induction. Well, it's a, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a point or two, a very profound philosophical problem. And the philosophical problem is, how do you know that the same thing is, that happened before is going to happen next? And the answer to that is, generally, you don't know. So, and it's a very tricky issue to come to terms with, you know. Um, I think you can, you can think of things as, you know, if you think about a hierarchy of resolution again, I think you can think of things as varying rather predictably in their unpredictability. So, for example, 
there's some indication that protons decay. But they decay over such a long time frame that the probability that that's going to affect us is virtually zero. And then, you know, there's other things that we interact with quite regularly, like the sun, that are stable across time frames that make it virtually ignorable. But, well, I, I'll tell you a story about that, and this is a good story to indicate how everything is nested in what you ignore. So, part of this story is fictional, but part of it isn't. So, one time when I was in graduate school in Quebec, in Montreal, I was typing on my pre-hard drive computer, and it, it stopped. And, you know, computers do that. And, and so, what happens when your computer stops? Well, the first thing that happens is, it depends on what you're working on. That's the <laughs> critical issue, right? I mean, and so what happens is you have a reaction that's proportionate to the deemed importance of what it was that you're working on. And that's go there's going to be an association between that and deadlines. And there's going to be an association between that and amount written that you think you might have lost. And then there's a, so, so there's, there's, because what you're doing is nested in hierarchy, you know, I'm writing a sentence to write a paragraph, to write an essay, to hand the essay in, to fulfill a requirement of class, to graduate, etc., all the way up the, the nested hierarchy, you're going to be upset in, proportionate, in proportion to the upset that, or to the, to the cost of this failure in terms of that entire structure. And so you do a rough estimate, eh, because you don't really know. And generally, you don't assume the worst, although you might immediately, because, you know, that's the sort of situation where someone will go, they'll, they'll get angry, or I will anyways, I'll pound my fist on the, on the and then I'll curse Microsoft, usually, <laughs> or, or whoever happened to make the computer, and then I'll remember that I can usually fix computers if there's something wrong with them, and that probably all it needs to do is be rebooted, and so forth. And so, what happens to begin with is a burst of emotion. And the reason for that is that you, the, the significance of the unexpected event cannot be easily constrained. And that's because there's so many things that might have gone wrong. Now, you know, because the worst case scenario is, well, maybe, maybe your computer's dead. And then that's a problem for all sorts of reasons we don't have to go into. And it's, it's not just a technical problem, right? It's also a political and social and economic problem, weirdly enough, because then when you go buy a computer, you have to figure out, well, who's the manufacturer and where's the manufacturing done and what's a high-quality computer? And it's like, good luck figuring that out because they change every month, so you just can't keep track of it. So, so it opens up a whole rat's nest of, or hornet's nest of, of problems or a pit of snakes, which is a better way of thinking about it. Okay, so fine. So my computer's dead, so I try to reboot. It doesn't reboot. And so I think, well, I don't know, maybe it's burned out or maybe there's something wrong with the plug. So I plug a lamp in and into the same outlet and I try to turn on the lamp and the lamp doesn't go on. And so then I think, aha, I blew a fuse because this place had fuses. So fine, so I go to the fuse box and it's daytime, so it's not a problem. And I look at the fuses and there's nothing wrong with the fuses. And so I think, well, I'll go down to the corner store and get a cigarette because I smoked at that time. And... Um, I'll think about it on the way, and so I go outside, and all the street lights are off, and so the whole city has come to a halt. I think, oh, there's a power outage. It's like, yeah, there was a power outage, and here's what happened. A solar flare emerged from the sun's surface, and it was a whopping big one, and a solar flare like that sends out a, a wind, essentially, of charged, charged particles that come zooming towards the earth, and there were protected from them for a variety of reasons, including the fact that the Earth has, um, the Earth is <coughs> magnetic, and for complicated reasons that helps protect us from, from cosmic rays, which is really a good thing as far as I'm concerned. But now and then those things are so powerful that they'll, well, here's an example. If, if you have a hydrogen bomb, a big one, and you, you detonate it in the middle of North America in the atmosphere, say high up, you wipe out all the electronics in the entire continent permanently. Because what happens is that when the bomb goes off, there's an electromagnetic pulse, and that produces electrical, cert, electrical current that runs through the wiring, and that'll be of it, in, very brief, obviously, but of sufficient intensity to fry the electronics. So, well, that's what the sun is. The sun is a massive hydrogen bomb, and so now and then it goes off with the force of, you know, millions of hydrogen bombs, and then we get the pulse, 
radiating towards us and then it sets up current in the power grid which is what happened here and takes out the whole power grid that's what happened that at that point the Quebec power grid was down for quite a while and it was because this so that's why my computer crashed is because the Sun wasn't as stable as I thought it was you know and, and that that gives you an example of just how interconnected things are and how much what's in how much you're taking for granted when you make anything invisible you know, and I, I would say that part of what happens in a civilized society, we'll say a civilized and productive society, is that there are rules of conduct in place, and there are effective processes in place, so that most of the time you can rely on things being like they were yesterday. So, for example, our power supply is unbelievably reliable, given that, you know, it's so, it's so intrinsically unstable. People have to beetle around non-stop just to keep the power on, but they do. And so we can sit here and ignore it. And, you know, when we can concentrate on something more arcane and much more focused. <clears throat> but it's also because we're, it's a relatively peaceful society and we have relatively free speech and, and so on and so forth. And you can predict with a high degree of certainty that if you come to class then what's going to happen in the class, the worst that's going to happen in the class, likely, is that you're either going to get bored or hot. So that's not so bad, you know. 